Yes, we're looking at some things that um, I uh, was um, looking at on uh, the news uh, about the events taking place in Israel, and there is a a focus on a prophecy that many in Israel says that this pertains to this event with Hamas. And that's Psalms 83. It says, Keep not thou silence, O God. Hold not thy peace, and be not still, O God. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult. And they that hate thee have lifted up the head. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. The word uh, hidden there means uh, treasured, favored ones. They have said, Come, let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. He's talking about a time in which you have a conspiracy to wipe out the nation. For they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. The tabernacles of Adam, the Ishmaelites of Moab, the Hagaronites, Gebel and Ammon, the Malachites, the Philistines, the inhabitants of Tyre. Asher also is joined with them. They have hope in the children of Lot, Selah. Do unto them as unto the Midianites, as unto Sisera, as to Jabin, at the brook of Kishon, which perished at Endor, and became as dung for the, for the earth. Make their nobles like Oreb, and like Zeb, yea, all their princes, Ziba and Zaluma, who said, Let us take to ourselves the houses of God in possession. O oh my God, make them like a wheel as the stubble before the wind, as the fire burneth in wood, and as the flame setteth the mountains on fire. So persecute them with thy tempest, and make them afraid with thy storm. Fill their faces with shame, that they may seek thy name, O Lord. In other words, he's talking about humiliate them, humble them. Let them be confounded and troubled forever. Yea, let them be put to shame and perish. That men may know that thou, whose name alone is Jehovah, art the most high over all the earth. So talking about a time <clears throat> when the the writer of this psalm is a direct intervention of God against the enemies that are confederate against Israel. And some of the rabbis think that this, this, this is the, the uh, time in which this is going to happen because the people that are named here are basically the people that are doing the problems. Right. So since this is the time that this is going to happen, what follows on from the action of Jehovah saying, okay, I'm now going to answer you. Direct intervention. Interesting. Very much like the hand over the, the tanks. Okay. So are you saying there's going to be intervention from Elohim? Uh, I'm saying ultimately, yes, in the very near future, because the Luciferians are going to directly intervene, and so are but Elohim and YHVH. But this prophecy that we just now read, mm -hmm. is that pertaining to Elohim or YHVH? YHVH. Yeah. YHVH. <clears throat> now, it may not be a time in which he totally reveals himself and everything, but the illusion is that his it's going to be a direct intervention of his power now, I think two, one of two things. <clears throat> this thing is going to be localized. It's going to be a, a, an attritious situation. Or it's going to expand. Mm. 
I believe the latter. I think it's going to expand. They said that Hezbollah has claimed that Israel has already killed five of their troops. Three Israelis have been killed on the northern border. <clears throat> you have, on a global scale, this thing is affecting just about everybody because people are lining up one side or the other. Now, when you say it's going to expand, but still limited within the Middle East? No. I'm saying it is expanding beyond the Middle East at this point. As already? Already, already, yes. You have pro-Palestinian, pro-Israel on a global scale. I see what you mean. Okay. See, yes. we have a bunch of Americans that have been killed, and some of a bunch of them are, are hostages right now. Mm. So we're going to be involved if we're going to try to get them hostages back. No, Which sure. they've already warned we will kill them. Sure. They may be killing them already. <clears throat> because Israel is saying, basically, their policy is they're going to stamp Gaza flat. They have to. Because if they leave Gaza open, the tunnels and the things, they're going to send their troops in there, that'll be a death trap. Mm -hmm. and they said also, Netanyahu said that they have a, uh, I forgot the exact word that he used, but basically, it was a um, an attack plan that's going to surprise the uh, the terrorists. That it's going to be something that they don't expect. That's going to wipe them out. So mm -hmm. I'm I'm thinking about it wouldn't be difficult for them to pour gas down those tunnels and uh, suffocate them, or do some particular thing before they send the troops in. But the inference seems to be that it's not going to be very, very long before they enter into directly. Now, there's one or two things. When this happens, it's quite possible that Hezbollah is waiting for Israel to sort of commit to the southern campaign, and then they come down from the north and try to wipe them out. Israel is anticipating that, so they've basically split their forces. But they wouldn't have enough, really, to hold off both. This, just, just take out Hamas is going to be a tremendous effort on their part. And Hezbollah, they said, is uh, ten times more powerful than Hamas. It makes me think of the conversations we've recently had where we understand, one, Iran has received $6 billion of withheld oil sales revenue. We know that's true. We also know that um, they've also got hold of the armaments, the ammunition, the military equipment from Afghanistan, and so exactly and all that. So yeah, there's no doubt about that. That can't be yes, uh, discussed. Yes, yes. We've seen uh, on on video Hamas people holding what looked like you know mortar, mortar, no, rocket, rocket, rocket launchers. Rocket launchers. What I'm trying to say which are clearly American-made. Yeah. So we know that all this stuff is, is going yeah. on. Yeah. So the question is, if Israel only has enough to deal with either Hamas at one time or Hezbollah at the other time, what's the implication for them having to deal with billions of dollars worth more of equipment? Iran is, is, Iran is more than happy to send people. Sure. You know that's the truth. Sure. They don't mind killing anybody. <coughs> what are your which on leads that? me to the next consideration. Uh, the Israelis are saying that this is um, equivalent of 9-11. Uh, yes, I heard them say that. 9-11 was an inside job. <coughs> Everybody said tremendous failure on the intelligence yeah. surfaces. That wasn't exactly. a failure on the intelligence surfaces. It was deliberate. They stood down. They said that even Egypt warned Israel about activities that were taking place and everybody's scratching their head. Well, we don't know why it didn't get passed up the line. Right. It was deliberate. Of course. It's planned. You see the hand of the deep state, the yep. global deep state, in this thing throughout, which means that it's going to go to a much higher level. Now, I believe it possibly include Ezekiel 32, verses 18 to 32. <clears throat> it 
Ezekiel 32, starting in verse 18. Son of man, wail for the multitude of Egypt. Cast them down, even her and the daughters of the famous nations, into the neither parts of the earth. With them that go down into the pits. Immediately opens up with the subterranean activities that are taking place. And how they're relating to representatives of the human race. Whom dost thou pass in beauty? Go down and be thou laid with the uncircumcised. They shall fall in the midst of them that are slain by the sword. She is delivered to the sword. Draw her and all her multitudes. The strong among the mighty. These little Sepharians. Strong comes from the Hebrew term El. Okay. Among the mighty guns. Shall speak to him. Egyptian leader. Out of the midst of hell. With them that help him. They are gone down. They are that they lie uncircumcised, slain by the sword. So this gives you an, an, an understanding of a plan hatched in hell. Is this the conversation between the Pharaoh and the, the leader, princess? The, the leader of the Luciferians. Okay. So who in verse 18 is the son of man? In where? Verse 18? Verse 18. Son of oh, man. That's, that's the, the prophet, Ezekiel. Okay. He's telling him, wail. Now this is a, this is a lament for Egypt. So then we're seeing the Luciferian move through Adamic man against Israel, which I presume in their minds will result in them coming up to react against something which they set up in the first place. It's a move that appears to be the goal is dominion over the surface world. Mm. Uh, it's also a move against the um, arm of YHVH, which is Israel. Now the, pro the prophecy that we read in Psalms 83 talks about that. He says there's a conspiracy here, Lord, between this, 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 and this against you and your people. This is talking about the same thing. You, had, you know, World War II was a plan for the Luciferians to come to the surface sure. through <clears throat> the Nazi movement and Adolf Hitler regime, as well as the Japanese. The same thing happening here again. So watch Egypt. Right now, Egypt is neutral. But you have a, a lot of activity taking place there, which people are being fermented. This is the way they, they, they overthrow governments. They ferment anger, rage, hostility, tearing down different things so that they can gain control over a government or a people or a nation. The way things are now, people are lining up, nations are lining up, lining up, lining up. And even the Israelis made a comment. They said, this thing makes no sense. Why would Hamas do what it's doing? What did it seek to gain? You know, possibility of gaining a long-term advantage. Yeah, they infiltrated Israel. <clears throat> they, they said that there are 1,500 dead terrorists in Israel. 1,500 at least came through those openings. But what, how long they were there? Maybe a couple of hours before the Israelis counterattacked and wiped them out. <clears throat> There's no way in the world they would believe that they could engage and conquer permanently right. territory. this territory of Israel. So what was the purpose of it? Makes no sense. Number one. Number two, what it's done is raise the ire of Israel. Now Israel, the, most of the people over there are from the tribe of Judah. And Judah, when you read um, Genesis 49, I think it is, Jacob talks about the strength of each tribe. It talks about Judah is a lion's whelp. In other words, Judah is a tribe in which when you provoke it, it is going to react ferociously. 
mercilessly. It's going to wipe you out. And they do. When, when, when the Jews of Judah are allowed to go in, they just wipe everything out. When Israel was coming across the, the uh, wilderness regions, conquering nation after nation, it was Judah that was leading sure. the charge. The priests were in front of Judah, but it was the tribe of Judah that goes into the land first. And when it, by the time they got to Moab, everybody was shaking in their shoes, scared to death. Well, what these guys did was to provoke Israel <coughs> uh, to make a scorched earth policy. Netanyahu and the chiefs of staff have said that they are going to literally obliterate Gaza. And he says, uh, basically, you know, we, we, we're not barbarians. We don't take joy in taking out civilians. But Hamas cares less about its civilian population because it's hiding in the midst sure. of them, figuring that if they get killed, then Hamas can use that as propaganda to further its interests. So what you find here as you read, it talks about uh, the, the individuals that comprise this group the conspiracy is the strong among the mighty shall speak to him out of the midst of hell with them that help him. They are gone down, they lie uncircumcised, slain by the sword. Asher is here. And all the company. Asher is um, the Assyrians. Okay. <coughs> Which basically um, comprise what is to a great degree today modern day Syrian region. Asher is there in all the company. His graves are about him, all of them slain, fallen by the sword. Whose graves are set in the sides of the pit. Her company is round about her grave, all of them are slain, fallen by the sword. Which caused terror in the land of the living. Now you notice they use this word consistently. Well, what's taking place over there now, they're all terrorist nations. There is Elam and all her multitude. Elam is a region that today would be in the southern part of Iran. Yes. A large, Elam was uh, basically a, um, a, 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 a civilization a, a kingdom within what is present-day Iran. So they were a tribe. Yeah, well, it was a tribe. It was a, a culture, okay. a people. Uh, the Elamites are talked mm -hmm. about in several different places. Mm -hmm. But today, it's, it would be present-day, uh, the below center present-day Iran. They are going to have tremendous, uh, um, a lot of them are going to be wiped out. There's Elam and all the multitude round about her grave, all of them are slain, fallen by the sword, which are gone down uncircumcised into the neither parts of the earth, which caused their terror in the land of the living. Terror, terrorist nation. Yet have they borne their shame with them, they go down to the pit. They have set her a bed in the midst of the slain with all her multitude. Her graves are round about him, all of them uncircumcised, slain with the sword, though their terror was caused in the land of the living. Yet have they borne their shame with them that go down to the pit. He is put in the midst of them that, are, that be slain. There is Meshach, Tubal, Russia. And all her multitude, her graves round about him, all of them circumcised, slain by the sword, though they caused their terror in the land of the living. Now this would be uh, countries like uh, Azerbaijan and uh, the... Uh, Afghanistan okay. regions, the Slavic regions, right. Kazakhstan, all that, business. Right. that are today being militarized. Um, Azerbaijan and Albania are about to go toe to toe. Uh, they're importing weaponry, uh, tooth and claw over there. This the, 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 is all being amassed for this particular point. 
I think what we're looking at here is the entrance into the beginning of sorrows. Mm -hmm. That as you read the nations, you see, you read, you're looking at them every day on the news. The, the inference is what will trigger this is the uprising of individual ethnic groups, pro-Palestinians, pro-Israelites, on a global scale, that basically go out into the furthest regions of the globe. North Korea is threatening to get involved. They want to attack Ukraine. Ukraine is supposedly pro-Israel. Right. And... Uh, <coughs> They want to um, basically take them into their planning on what they're doing because they want them to ally with them against Russia. So this whole thing on a global scale is just, it's, it's orchestrated. It's not something that's happening uh, happenstance. People are being incited to do specific things. And there's only a few large nations that at this point haven't openly declared what side they're on. Uh, Turkey is so far straddling the fence between uh, NATO and uh, the Eastern powers. Sure. Well, it's going to go for the Muslims. Of and um, so you're going to have East-West, you're going to have a division straight down the middle with all these people on either side. Then you have, um, let's see, the, uh, verse 27, They shall not lie with the mighty that are fallen of the uncircumcised, which have gone down to hell with their weapons of war. And they have laid their swords under their heads, <clears throat> but their iniquity shall be upon their bones, though they were the terror of the mighty in the land of the living. The terror of the mighty. Who are the mighty? America, Britain, the West. In the land of the living. Yea, thou shalt be broken in the midst of the uncircumcised and shall lie with them that are slain with the sword. There is Edom, her kings. Who are the Edomites? <coughs> Jordan. Uh -huh. You will find the Jordan region, most of these indigenous peoples, are from there. Uh, Moab, the Moabites, the Ammonites, the ancestors of these people are all around the Jordan re re region uh, on the west bank of the Jordan. So they're going to uprise in a way in which they're going to be threatening Egypt, uh, Israel. Even today they're talking about protests in the west bank where it's becoming greater and greater and greater where uh, the Israelis have to position uh, the military to contain the, uh, the population because the Arabs are going to side with the Palestinians. Okay, there's Edom, her kings, and all her princes, which with their might are laid by them that are slain by the sword. They shall lie with the uncircumcised and with them that go down to the pit. They be the princes of the north, all of them, and all the Zidonians. Who are the Zidonians? Present day Hezbollah, Lebanon, the people to the north of Israel. And all the Zidonians which are gone down with the slain, with their terror, terror, their terrorist nations, they are ashamed of their might. And they lie uncircumcised with them that be slain with the, by the sword, that bear their shame with them that go down to the pit. Pharaoh shall see them and shall be comforted over all his multitude, even Pharaoh and all his army slain by the sword, saith the Lord God. So watch for some leader to come out of Egypt. If you see Egypt coalescing, maybe be, the government being overthrown, and suddenly some guy coming out 
who overnight is you know being heralded as some mighty person. This is this is a certainty of what's happening. And it's also a certainty that we're entering into the beginning of sorrows. Now, what is the what is the ultimate of this? The last passage. <clears throat> Verse 32, for I have caused my terror in the land of the living. And he shall be laid in the midst of the uncircumcised with them that are slain with the sword, even Pharaoh and all his multitudes, saith the Lord God. So you're going to have a divine intervention. <clears throat> YHVH is going to intervene. How he intervenes <coughs> is not really clear but it is right. going to be a supernatural move on the part of YHVH for I have caused my terror in the land of the living mm -hmm. okay. what he's going to do is undermine all these nations weaken them and then destroy them the inference is that they go down without having a chance to do what they want to do and that is go to war with Israel hmm. so the inference is going to, whatever it is it's going to be sudden going to be swift. Now whether they know that it's a supernatural move of YHVH or if it's coached in some sort of a natural phenomenon like an earthquake or a tremendous um, uh, act of some colossal huge destruction that hits these places we don't know. But it's going to be designed to take them all out. You've got millions of them that are going to straight to hell. Bodily. So, having said all that, from what we know, are you willing to say categorically that what we see in Israel today, right now, is a direct link to the beginning of Sorrows? Yes. And that's what we should expect to see. So we should see YHVH's hand involved in bringing about the beginning of Cyrus. That's what I'm getting to. Well, it's Elohim that brings about the beginning of Cyrus. Through, through, through YHVH, YHVH. Yes. But there are a series of things happening. YHVH constitutes a move uh, <clears throat> in the plan of Elohim. The Luciferians constitute a move in the plan of Satan. So you have these two forces converging with Elohim manipulating so that his plan goes forward. There's going to be a thing that takes, like I said, everything is going to change. The reality spectrum is going to be incalculable because people are going to see supernatural events taking place they can't explain. They're going to see things that they never believe. Israel would probably think it's going to be overrun uh, things are going to take place in the rest of the world <clears throat> outside of the two the two places I think that are going to be preserved are the nations of Israel and the churches yes. the churches in the in the behalf of the committed Christians everything else in the human race is ultimately going to go down to twos if we're looking at it right we're going to see what we're reading come to pass before our eyes. Yeah.